Me, 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 me. Hi there. This is Jim the Keys bartender. I'm here with Papa Joe and Josh. Hey, Josh. Say, hey, hey, nice uh, to meet you, Papa I was, Joe. Uh, uh, Josh just asked. He said, do I have to do some vocal warm-ups? Yeah, that's what yeah, you're like, doing. Uh, you're doing uh, me Ron Burgundy yeah. Uh, yeah. style. Mal Frau Brown Mal. Cow. How now, Brown, Brown Cow? cow. Wells Vagina. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he says it in that context. No, but no. He, San he Diego is German <laughs> for Wales Vagina. Oh. And uh, oh, the other show we started last week. <laughs> <laughs> Many, um, the man that made the Eiffel Tower out of steel. No iron. Okay. No so, iron. <laughs> no, but uh, I like I like this shit to said right before we go on the air. Kind of nice lead in to it. What we're gonna what we're gonna this better about. be a segue to something really big. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was just telling Whale's Josh. Vagina big. Oh, I don't know how big a whale's vagina is. I, I know whales crawl up in it. Is it I bet. Big enough could, to go? I bet. Do you think Jonah whale. was actually in the vagina and not in the whale's mouth? I think he was swallowed. Listen, it's, I it's think a question. Out of no, because that's in unless life, unless the unless right. the whale. No, no one could swim that fast back then, and uh, I don't think the whales are just sitting around and Jonah just ran up the thing, and they'd have <laughs> and to be going yeah, backwards. Yeah, right. So I just think the mouth. It's, it's the mouth is the entry. Hey, you know, if that the, that story, it's a story. It's a story. It's a th- hey, we can he, build he a religion go around the blowhole. You know, yeah. <laughs> he probably was. He was probably trying having at it with the blowhole, and got sucked in. So, oh, that is disgusting. I don't know why I said that. Josh, well, that's why we make we'll talk later about starting a religion around this whale's mm. vagina thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys have similar. Yeah. I see some picking feelings in our about future. that. So, uh, um, it just reminded me. I had some notes. Um, I forgot a story that happened when I was coming back from Poland, and uh, I got stopped at the um, by their border control in uh, in Poland, and uh, uh, the I guess they're checking my bag and stuff the one when i was going in they thought the um the microphone was a kind of like a a futuristic butt plug or something like that it was silver but then they told me it was a microphone they saw the legs unfold they were so disappointed going out i'm showing my passport and he looks like this and he goes oh you look like a russian hitman in this picture and i go what the fuck are you kidding me i look at the picture and i go black shirt indetermined haircut not smiling yeah, I well, guess kind of. I mean, you look like Hans Gruber's bodyguards. <laughs> oh, Christ. An older one now. I'd have to be on an older oh, okay. one. Yeah. Well, you can blame the t- department. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? They they have a hard life over there. So um, <laughs> in Russia. Yeah. But uh, I was looking at the picture and I go, wow, I never really worried uh, about my driver's license photo or anything people used to say oh look you're laughing in this you look stupid in that no no big deal it was a photo and this was the one time when the guy when the guy said you look like russian hitman and i go fuck man never good when a border agent from another country yeah yeah he says i look like russian hitman i guess well i guess i'm not a russian hitman (laughs) because i'm i'll tell you right it's one thing nobody will ever say to me Mm -hmm. yeah I definitely do not look like either a Russian or Yeah, one of those guys undercover and stuff like I that. I would have just shrugged my shoulders with my palms upward and gone, ah, yeah. In Russia, we, <laughs> I don't, we don't know, have maybe. to hit the man. Is there Woman an opportunity? Hit man. <laughs> <laughs> what, right? you, uh, George, our coworker, used to say, do a great Yakov yeah. Smirnoff. Yeah, in Didn't Russia, he? hit man, no kill you. <laughs> You kill a hitman. That doesn't make sense. Oh, whatever. <laughs> that's what the joke uh, would be. <laughs> there was a, a, one last thing about Russia. I was reading a story about um, a study that was done, a sociological experiment, where we just go to a, 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 a vacant building and they get a couple people and they'd stand in line at the door. And this is during the Soviet thing. And then a line would immediately form behind them. It was a phenomena because at that time, they, because they had limited um, consumer get, goods, people would line up for the vodka, bread, toilet paper. And so stuff they wouldn't like ask questions. They wouldn't ask they us questions. As, hey, you better get in you line. You better quick. get in line. If it's worth saying, if it's worth staying in line, we're going to get behind. They didn't even <laughs> ask the people. Just people just so that, to, that's, the line. that's it. Hey, that's that's like the bathroom line, and this got it. This has to be the bathroom line, doesn't it? And when people are waiting in here, there's a line. There's a line. So if you're in a you know big party, especially if you go to college and you, in college you've seen a well, big line, you know well, that's where the bathroom. What line bugs is. me is when you go to places that have multiple lines for buying the same thing, yeah. and then one line will move faster than the other line, and then you just feel like you're getting cheated. Oh, like oh. what? I got in the line, or you're going to get at a teller, a, story, a bank right? teller. Yep. And you're like, I was here before that person, and they're already. Let's go. Yeah. 
I just say tell your most maddening. I got my. I, I have. Dog. I have my one line. One I have my most good, maddening that's one. A good idea. One yeah. line. Yeah, everyone has to have a story that you know when you're at the checkout counter and things like that. You know the the old lady whips out a checkbook and stuff like oh. that. Going in into coupons and saying, "I want to return it." What used to be death was when when welfare were actually coupons out of booklets. They had to tear them out. Yeah, it's like you're fucking looking for a D oh, ticket to get on a ride in Disney yeah, World. Yeah, exactly. Back in <laughs> hey, the listen, day. I don't mean anything. It's it's a shame that they have that, and it's kind of a a mark of shame that when people have the uh, use those or booklets were an yeah. absolute mark of shame. I mean, yeah. you had to sit there and pull them out. It's I mean. Now they use a EBT card, I think it's, it's called. A, it's like a credit card. So, you know what? You're still on welfare, but you get to use a card. You're not holding anyone up. No one's staring at yeah. you. Well, you I know? just don't know how that would work with my father nowadays since he spent all our food stamps on oh. alcohol. <laughs> well, they used to sell them. They used to. Well, what the actually? Lagers. In, in, in the city, yeah, the yeah, difference on the dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a under, there was always an underground economy. Yes. Yeah. Was that underground on the you, dollar. Well, we, were, we lived in a dry county at the time, yeah. I remember. And there was this uh, a single wide mobile home, and just conveniently the dri- the driveway to it wrapped around the back and back out the front, right? right? And that's what you do. You just drive around. They'd open the door right behind them. I still remember as a kid, I was seven, eight years old, and you could yeah. see all the booze packed up behind them. And it was always an exchange of once a month that the place would get busted, the cops would have a big party, and then it'd be back in business again. They have that in the hood and all that. See, that happens. It's funny. It's a, wherever it is, it replicates itself. And some people say, well, that's just like the ghetto. No, no, no it happens. No, it's it's it happens in, in, in the poor communities, area. whether Latino, white, I'm sure that poor Asian, uh, you know, the Lao. Listen, There's not a lot of poor Asians. Mean, I don't care what color do you, you are, think- where you're from. You're going to do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think that they now have some kind of EBT swipers? That they it wouldn't surprise use? me. No, well, the, I mean, you could probably use the. No, uh, you could set up a merchant cube. account. Some kind no, of cube app. The cube. The cube app. On yeah, the yeah. Phone. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but you have to be, I think you have to be an improved vendor. So no, you become an approved one. vendor. You just lie about what you're. Vending. I know, I know, but I got one, and they didn't Venmo. ask me for a sales Venmo. permit or anything. I got. Well, one. I, I, I'm just thinking that wherever it's rife for abuse, there's people. It's not that far a leap to be able to create a um, some kind of barrier, right? Now we're getting away from the line zone, I, but that was fascinating. You guys are, uh, are great together, weren't you? Well, I was talking about the line. I was uh, on my first or second family cruise with my dad. We were, and it was Abby Sky, my brother, his wife, his kids, a couple of my other nieces from my sister's family, and and my stepbrothers and we're getting off the ship we're ready to go we're in bermuda it's beautiful man and we're getting to get on this uh get tickets for a bus and a and a boat ride to get across to the main island and then go to uh the um we wanted to go to a beach so we're waiting there and we get in the line and we're figuring out we're fast moving the line and these people are all they're doing is selling tickets and this guy goes out there and he starts bringing opening up a map and having the person point everything out to him all the places they should go to. And I go, what the fuck? You know, we're waiting for a, a boat and all this stuff. The person is selling tickets. You're occupying their time. So um, I'm not saying anything. I'm not going to be the one to say it for once, right? I'm not going to be yeah. the one. I'm yeah. not going to be the asshole. Gonna I'm not going to be the one to start in trouble because yeah. I think I was another cruise I was on. I was a little brutal on one of my other relatives. So I figure I'm going to lay back. And all of a sudden my dad goes out and he goes, and my dad's really a uh, patient person. And he goes, hey, come on, this people got to go someplace. And the, guy, and the guy started getting wise with my dad. And I go, whoa, buddy, you're, you're out of line now. Because what are you going to, I said, well, I'm, what, tides being twice as big as you and something like that. And fine. I mean, and you want me to beat you up in front of your kids? <laughs> just grab them by yeah, the Yeah, yeah, and and I'm like this and just them. drag it. it uh, don't be an idiot. Just, and, and we're going, he goes, and he just looks down again and starts asking questions. I said, we're trying to buy tickets for this. And I look at the guy. I look at the guy who works here. You work here, right? What's your job? He goes, selling tickets. I said, sell tickets. This guy can go someplace else. And everyone in the line started jumping, going like, move along. And he's looking at me. And it turned out he was on the same ship. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I was hanging out. The, some of the other uh, guys I was hanging out with was even Oh, than so me, no so. awkward moments. Well, no, I was talking that. to the captain and all that stuff. You didn't have to whip out your magic microphone and hit him in the head. Nope, nope, nope. Pity. It was before it was podcasting, so it was Pity. like that. But that guy wait, waiting in line where someone's inordinately 
taking up the time of the person doing, you know, they're doing yeah. their job. Yeah. It, That's the reason why self-checkout, people go and say, I'll just stay in line for check." They, they'll stay in line for self-checkout sometime because then though they're just dealing with an idiot in front of them that doesn't know what they're doing. Then the idiot professional um, person that's being interfered with by an idiot taking up the time. Is this entire podcast based on the premise of you just wanting to get back at him? Be like, you know what, dude? Oh, I'm I got someone on a podcast. I'm going to get some I got followers, someone to get back. Then I'm going to humiliate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't really? know the guy. If I did, I want to humiliate the guy. He, I'm sure he's done it. I'm waiting for I, this the name is not, drop. This is not he his first. He's, this probably, is not, he's probably harassed millions yeah, of yeah. other people he's by not, now. This is not the first or last time this guy did it. But I do have a brilliant move, and it's Key's bartender thing. So I'm going to have uh, – I'll test both of you on this to think what the outcome was. And, um, and you go with your most likely scenario. Okay, this guy comes in. He uh, has he's drinking uh, IPAs like a bandit. Nice guys, talk talkative and stuff like that. Has a couple appetizers, stuff like that. He's building up a, quite a nice little bill going there and stuff like that. And then he orders to go food because that's to bring it to his. He made it sound like he works down here and stuff like that. So he goes, "Can I? Can you uh, set? You know, give us our bill." And I go and uh, get the bill. He gives me his card. I go back, and I notice he has a pen in his hand. I didn't give him a pen yet. I go, that's weird. How many times do people don't have their pen? And this guy doesn't look like he needs a pen or something, but he has a pen. It's like a little fine print uh, uh, felt tip, right? What happened after that? Well, my first question is going to be, what was he wearing? Like, where did this pen come from? Did he have, like, a pocket, like a... Oh, yeah, no, I'm not saying like, it was where hidden. Where did the pin come from? Probably his pocket or something, yeah. Well, well of course he yeah, had a Yeah, he pocket. itemized okay, your bill, big. didn't he? <laughs> nope. He didn't? No, he okay, didn't. No, okay, no, okay. No, there was an outcome. Saying, like, I, like, not just the pocket. Did he have, like, a shirt with a shirt pocket where the pin went? I don't, I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly, but he looked like know, he could have. That's very important shirt. to me for some reason. No, 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 that's good. That's good. But what would you think? What, what, what was the conclusion of this? Okay, so... I know, and I'm not so giving you a lot of, you, I'm not giving yeah, you a lot yeah, of no, things, so and I'm so. not thinking, I'm, th- I'm thinking the same thing you guys are going, so what the hell are you doing with your own pen? Yeah, you just give it to him, he's got his own pen. Yeah, I go, I always give a pen. Who doesn't give a pen? So, so, so you hold it out, and he's already got one. Yeah, I take the pen back. You take the pen back, what happens next? Yeah. He forgets to sign in the credit card receipt. Oh, that's a great fucking one if that would happen. <laughs> yeah, that his pen. He pulls no, his own he pen signed out, just yeah. lays he, it down and He signed it and totaled it with his pen. He what? He signed it and totaled it with his pen. He, he totaled it himself. Yeah. He signed it. Which is uh, you're supposed okay. to because you did a tip line and stuff like that. Yeah. So what happened? Give up? Yeah. No tip. Oh. What's the strategy behind it? The strategy behind it is that you can't alter it. It was a strange pen, different color, and you just write it in there. So it would be a different handwriting. He would go, well, that's not my well, pen. What do you that's do? You write it with a red pen? I mean, I know you got a blue and black pen behind it. No, this was a felt Oh, pen. so it was such a, yeah, it was such yeah, a yeah. unique pen. Yeah, yeah, pen. you're not, I didn't have that pen. Oh. I'm like, like who, who has a That's his way of going around stealing yeah, yeah. people. And I go, like, and he left, it was so nice, and he says, and he looked familiar. And I'm like, and I wrote his name down. Oh, nice. Let's I fucking wrote his oh, name down. Oh, please tell us. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Yeah, I'll no. just, You know what? I we think sh- I wrote it down wrong. You can, so ble- can, you can bleep it out. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Was this recently? Rhyme. Oh, this is two days ago. So, oh, let's hope he's listening. What a douche canoe. Robert, wait, wait. I'm not going to say his middle name. His last name may be Borselli. <laughs> oh, you know, his own- if you're a paisan and you did this to a fellow person working in the service industry. Oh, no, no. I, I wasn't. You know what? You're a I was like, like this. I go, motherfucker. You know, it was, um, you know, some people are forgetful. Sometimes they take the wrong sheet. And some people yeah, are just up, assholes. But this was straight up. He filled it. Even if he took the wrong receipt, he still filled it out as if he didn't. Oh, he filled it. In. He filled it out on the thing, the yeah. thing I took back, and he took the uh, other one, no, and he left man. without me looking. And they go, oh, well, I mean, he didn't stiff me. That could have been worse, just walking out and stuff like that. And they go, well, what a, what a, what a locacious and friendly uh, person to not, you know, go out of the way not to tip and, and to do it in – I mean, I guess the assumption was he's done it before and people have, um, yeah. they just filled in their own can, tip. Can I do a PSA right now for all what? the people listening? Well, P- no. They, P- PSA. Yeah. Bartenders will remember th- your face more for that than if you come in every once a week. I, I, still got cu- I still got customers that come in and I forget their names, but those ones that do things like that, I know you. I know your name. 
You better not show your face again. <laughs> well, I mean, just the strategy, developing the strategy to no, do that. No and, like that. and they go, oh, my God. Like, what? I mean, you're a nice you're a decent guy. You're friendly. You're personable. You're talking to me. And all of a sudden, you're a big fucking character flaw. You're uh, Steve Buscemi <laughs> in uh, uh, Reservoir Dogs. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah dogs, no, the argument about it, this to it, me. But, so I mean, like, I'm fucking. It's not my job to do that and stuff like that. But he wasn't. Why do I? He wasn't be pink? sitting at the bar talking and stuff like that and stuff like that. You know, if you don't want to, don't sit at the fucking bar and don't talk to me. What color does he make up for that when he's doing pink. that rant? No, no. He goes. I don't. Why do I got to be pink, Mr. Pink. pink White? Why can't I be white? Yeah, why can't I be? But doesn't he make up a color? Like, I'll just be brown. Or, oh, yeah. Uh, that's no, what I would have done no. anyway. No, he was, a fa- me, he was a father. Mr. Fuchsia. <laughs> <laughs> you missed a pick. Yeah. <laughs> With that rad, like, he, he smoked one million packs of cigarettes <laughs> at one time, <laughs> you know? So uh, that that thing, oh. I you know what? I got more joy from that incident than regret. I'm talking about this thing, the guy with the pen. Oh. I go, hey, thank you. What an asshole. But you know what? I got material for him. That's a new <laughs> one. I haven't seen that before. I mean, I'm sure there's girls no out tin, there. No tip, no yeah. tip. Yeah, yeah. There's one guys that go in for the, you know, the handshake and they touch the boob and they go, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's their move. You know, you ever see that? That's the move. Or the old stop. The, uh, the old person. <laughs> the old person like stumble. Though. Hone in on that one, huh? Right? Yeah. Putting out, I'm putting out my hand out like I'm, oh, I can't steady myself. Yeah, well, I find it, I, I'm an ass man just on the basis that I find it easier to accidentally touch asses. Well, now that you said that, now that you said that, it's way easier and more oops, like understandable. Now that you said it, oops. Now this that you said it's on record, stayed. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. It's on record, so what? <laughs> Anytime you grab an ass, it's always going to be your own purpose. I just said that when, for comedic <laughs> purposes. It has absolutely no truth. Do you got to, <laughs> the one thing about it, is well, I mean, I'll, I'll say stuff, and I'm, it'll implicate me in uh, something. Yeah, but I got to not worry about it. Oh, I don't worry about it, but I do kind of sometimes I, I, kick around I, it when my once again, to listen to once the again, I said like, yeah, there's over 200. I'll let you know. This is uh, <laughs> I said th- something you're not gonna yeah. like. There's over 220 episodes, <laughs> so I said a lot of shit. So I can't yeah. be possibly do all the stuff again. I'm not a serial murderer. I don't trap women in my. You just need to be stuff. around people who are extremely forgiving. Yeah. This would be the worst. You cover say a lot for of, a serial murderer. Yeah, we talk mm. a lot of shit. Oh, that would be great. Do? I'm a podcast. Um, with other guys. What do I do? Well, I'm Jeffrey Dahmer. I. Uh, what do you have? I. Uh, I do a lot. Of, I have refrigerators in my house. So freezers, upright freezers. Um, he was a very calm person. I think. He goes. I like hanging out with young, uh, young, young men. Drink some wine. That's your. You know, I like making zombies. <laughs> I like some zombies. I drill some holes. I have a, a black and decker. Yeah. Uh, drill and uh, black and decker. I, and I like to hot do, water. And we're I good. like to That's do arts and crafts on some of my friends, and then um, and then go you to know, just kind of meditate on uh, those things. You know. That's that's the way it is. <laughs> Built up a big total, appetite. total fucking nut because the nuts are totally calm when they're talking. Oh, that's well, my passion. Imagine talking to any of those guys. I mean, Ted Bundy. Yeah, there's actually video um, of how of calm Bundy. they get. Ted Bundy, extremely but, but, calm, yeah. extremely bright. Oh, I mean, he was, a he genius. was so suave. I, you know, he might have turned me. I don't know. No, I, no, but he was brilliant. He was brilliant. Yeah, and yeah, very no, convincing. I, we, we, yeah, what 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 made him that part? That part, like where. Obviously, he wasn't a. He didn't have a rapist wit. I mean, no, but he, didn't <laughs> he, he was. A, was he didn't a rapist? He escape was he a rapist or just a murderer? Police? You know, that's a good question. Did he? Did he rape? You know, I forget. Because obviously, his his no, thing was just violence was against women. That's the ultimate violence, right. right? Murder, right? Yeah, I don't remember if there was penetration. I don't remember. I think it was straight out murder, which doesn't make him any. I think it was too. any better. Once you kill somebody, that's the ultimate thing. And that they're all bad. They're all yeah. bad. Yeah, and. uh but his thing, I, you know, when you run into, and we'll, we'll, we may get this later in the show, or may get into one tonight. Um, the uh, what, what, what the fuck did we get? How did we get to the serial <laughs> no murder? We started with Dahmer. Oh, the ass thing. thing. <laughs> no, the ass the thing. The ass thing. Being ass, and I said, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now see, this is how I backtrack. And then I said, oh, I said a lot of shit and stuff like that. And then you talked about trapping people in the basement <laughs> and all that stuff. We're caught up now, right? You did yeah. it again, ass thing. That was now a re- what? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, 
that's all right. We do a lot of things. We have pinky up the butt. We were talking about the uh, previous one or previous episode was awesome. I, you know, I, I was kind of disturbed by some of the disruptions in the show and stuff like that. And I said, the show still came out funny. With the, that, that thing with the penis, the people shoving uh, dildos yeah. up their penises. Up their penises. Up their, yeah, there's yeah. that thing. I know. I didn't fucking know that. Thing. I thought it was impossible. Like we can't do it. Right. And it's called? Oh. A dildo. Oh, I don't know. I forgot. Like, it's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> okay. Ready? Dildo. Sounding. Sounding. That's what it is. Sounding because it's, uh. You know what that is? Nautical it, terms? too. That's weird. I don't know if they drew a because correlation to nautical terms. It's sounding terms. because they can ting it like a. Well, it's supposed to go down to your prostate. Right, they 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 t- give it a tap, and what is yeah. that called? Like a music fork? What is that thing called? Well, the reverberation of the uh, it's like a tuning fork. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So they go. Doo. That's why it's called sounding because it makes a little I guess vibration. They flick it. I know all about that. No, they were talking about big ass things going in. Oh yeah, no, oh. they they graduate. Yeah, yeah, they get bigger. It's just like the guys that you know that don't think about their ear holes when they get their piercings, and, and then they, they want Af- thing they know, like the African pie gigantic. plates. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it is, but with the urethria. A big gaping hole in your ear. Urethra. 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 Unless that sounds like a planet, like Babylon. Yeah, yeah. Could be someone's first name. I don't know. It's it's shaped like a lotus flower. Urethra, come here. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, your. It's your brother. We're we're wrecked him at. He's a great singer. Anyway, all right. And your your aunt sphincter says hello. (laughs) Aunt sphincter. Okay, we're going to take a break. Uh, it's 20, uh, 2130. This is great because we're in the topic. I'm going to come back. We we can talk about that. The character of the keys and what's this? I think we should delve on into it. And if you do agree with it, that's fine. If you disagree with it, it's not, that's not fine. We're delving. <laughs> no, that is fine. Whether you're one of our regular visitors to the Florida Keys or you can't wait to visit for the first time, you'll want to stay up to date on everything that's going on in the Florida Keys to learn all the secrets, tips, and the stuff we don't talk about to anyone but each other. Visit 43keys.com. Sign up for our newsletter and never miss any of the exciting things we have planned for you. That's 43 Keys, the number four, the number three, keys.com. Hi there, we're back. Welcome it, back, everybody. Welcome back. We are back. And the keys, um, the thing I was thinking about how the keys vibe is, you always got, we got t- fucking Jimmy Buffett and all that stuff. The weather's beautiful. We were talking about the other day. Yeah, it's gorgeous right now. Yeah, yeah. it's um, mid-70s. I was just talking to my dad up north, and he was saying, oh, it's great. It's going to go above freezing today. And... Um, I said, oh, he said, how's it down there? I said, uh, yeah, it, it, it's still, it's getting a bit chilly. <laughs> um, we had to, um, we had to put a blanket on, uh, when, <laughs> at night. And then, and he goes, and he goes, what, what's it like in the daytime? 75, you know, like, <laughs> uh, like that. And I'm not one of those people like you, uh, down here in the Keys, once the chill comes in, you get bundled up like the fucking little brother in uh, a Christmas story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Been on, they put on the the when it gets, in, the one it gets to be like 65, I'm wearing a sweater. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's chilly. He's wearing a sweater right now, and it's 75. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's breezy, and I don't want to, you know. Oh, chilly. you are Italian. Hey, listen. I'm you used know? to I'm used to hot, especially yeah, yeah, after yeah. this summer. My blood's about as thin as anyone else. No, no. We, for me, uh, yeah, if I'm sitting there, Abby's, uh, Abby's from Poland. I'm fucking Poland. And she's sitting there, and she says, well, it's going to get humid today. Maybe she shut the windows. I go. I'm not shutting the windows. If, it, if this is the temperature, is it, I'm not shutting the windows. Yeah, it's room this temperature is not outside. Like, actually, in the shade, it's still like 72 degrees. It's not like yeah. It's not. It's no, not like uh, windows uh, are open. Opening when in the midsummer here, like that scene from um, what's that Riddick Chronicles of Riddick with that planet that when the sun rises, oh, it's everything just flames. It just flames. Just everything <laughs> fucking burning <laughs> up. Everybody yeah. <laughs> walk outside. I just like. Oh fuck! I'm soaked. I just took a shower and you walked mean out the door. August for yeah. us. Yeah. You're August, and you walk outside, and you go, you're all fresh and and, and and showered, and all of a sudden, two minutes outside, it's fucking waste of time there. Yeah, people you're in soaked. the cold always. Sorry, people in the cold always talk about. Oh, I got to put on all these extra clothes and everything. Well, I kind of have to do the same thing. I have to take extra clothes with me to work during the summer because I have this to change when I get there. Just to drive, even with air conditioning in my car, getting in my car, waiting for my AC to come on, by the time I get to work, it's still not, I'm, I'm just drenched and smoked. Yeah. And yeah. i got to have extra clothes, so there you go. Yeah, and the reason why there's so many fucking naked people down here. 
You know, just ripping your clothes off. You go, God damn it. Why this drive, why drive not? from point A to point B with clothes on when they're just going to be yeah. ruined when you get there? But what do you do when they get naked down in Key West? <laughs> they throw a bunch of grease paint over their body. <laughs> Fucking trapping your pores. Yeah. yeah. Well, paint up and call it a party. Oh, man. man paint. I just, they should just change Fantasy Fest to, like, someone put on a mask and just no body be paint. Naked. Just see that naked. Naked, you know, putting a little, yeah. putting a little so pellet. Some, yeah, make so, a little, some of those people need the paint. Oh, well, it doesn't. <laughs> some people need lots it's of not, paint. It's they not need look, plaster besides not, the paint. I know it does. It looks like a beautiful tropical garden on that 350 pound woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a big garden. <laughs> a beer garden. So the Keys does have a definite vibe, right? I, I agree it, it does. You know, I mean, everyone has their own thing. You think like it's more of the Jimmy Buffett kind of thing where if you think of the music, you're just kicking back. You're, I mean, if you listen only Jimmy Buffett, nothing fucking gets done down here. <laughs> yeah, we're just wasting away. Yeah, and Margaritaville, <laughs> you're just uh, getting nice salt. Yeah, we're just fucking to kill. shake her salt, salt already. Yeah, making big trips to the liquor store, you know, <laughs> eating cheeseburgers. No one, he never mentions working out or watching your diet or eating a fucking no, salad. No. I mean, you figure most of the people will be dead by the time they're 30 with that kind of lifestyle. They do live on, some of them. Right? Live on what? They live on. They live on. Oh, it's yeah. Like, like they're oh. fucking not dead. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you see it all well, the look, time here. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> you see, they're, they're like roaches. Yeah. You see the 80-year-old with the well, I do. goiter I do some. And I do. Tiny legs. And I, do like, oh, I do some serious <laughs> stuff to mitigate survive. that. And I still feel the effects I I look at some of these people like my fucking heroes. They don't do shit. They smoke what they want. They drink what they want. They don't fucking work out. They eat what they want. The worst shit in the world. And they keep on waking up every day. Doing their own thing. I mean, fucking amazing. Like, give me shit. I remember the first time we introduced that. We're at the catch on. I, mean, I, I think it's failure to... Recognize the catch. We're in a, uh, the back, uh, the patio. It's a beautiful day. We're at the catch restaurant. Um, the happy hours Monday through Friday, three thirty to five thirty. We have martini Mondays, six to eight, five dollars. They got a great selection of menus. You can friend us on Facebook, uh, on Instagram. Uh, you can find probably the links from my uh, Facebook page. But I just I fail you to mention that. So these people that uh, when we first instituted uh, martini. Mondays? Martini Monday. On a, a, I, I started out, and I'm thinking, when they go, what do you think, Jim? And I go, six to nine. Yeah. Fuck, did I get that wrong? Because people weren't heady. You know how John, what did Jack Nicholson say in um, A Few Good Men? You want a fucking uh, Martini Monday? You can't fucking handle a mar- three-hour Martini Monday. <laughs> no, not a three-hour Martini Monday. They couldn't fucking handle it. They couldn't handle it. They were being fucking carried out. They were breaking glasses and stuff. Not on purpose. Um, well, one of these women, days. one of the women listen to the thing, she goes, we're the whores and we're here. And, and they're, they're, they, she was great. It's a former flight attendant and stuff like that. And I'm not going to say her name, but she said this in front of everyone. She goes, we're old whores. Hey. We're drinking martinis. I said, well, I think that's pretty much explanatory. And you pretty much put the exclamation point on that yeah. right there by yeah. saying that. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, leave, and then, then all of a sudden, right after you said it, crash. <laughs> Fucking martini. Another martini glass. They were breaking left and right, man. We had the glass. We were sweeping them up. And we're getting them. In, and they, they were leaving there. They left their credit cards. They were getting carried out. The husband, a former pilot who doesn't drink, uh, came and picked them up. And they're carrying some of them out to the car. It looks like fucking Gettysburg. I would call that you a success. I mean? Yeah, you did a really good job. But I would put a little blame on that martini glass. I've always said that if I had a time machine, you know, this, this is being a bartender for almost 20 years. Oh, they're fucking huge. Uh, martini, if, if I had a time machine, I would skip Hitler and stop the guy from inventing the martini glass. Because you could drink that same glass. You could drink that same drink in one of these little rocks glasses, and it would taste just as delicious. But instead, you have this big top-heavy mess. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's not filled to the brim, the person's going to let you know about it, even though that's it's like a wait, drunk, wait, wait. It's like a drunk barometer. It's like, it's like, Some stylish person invented that. Yeah, I just want to go smack they're fucking, you're, If you're so drinking, if you're they're, drinking they're straight gin, here. if you're drinking straight gin, hello, ladies. Hey. In the right place. <laughs> um... If you're drinking straight gin, and that's what it was before with uh, vermouth, 
And they said, well, okay, we're fucking alcoholics. We're going to drink this chilled in a glass. Maybe. It just looks like you're an alcoholic. It looks like an alcoholic. Oh, wait. Put it in this glass. Put it in this <laughs> glass. glass. Put it in this fancy glass. Now you look so Oh, with my short bitchy haircut, which was the bitchy for original <laughs> bitchy haircut, right? Yeah. Oh, Wasn't yeah. that? Yeah. The page yeah. boy. The original man. <laughs> and there's some hot women with those bitchy haircuts. Yes, there are. Yes. Uh, and, and there's some hot bitchy women out there's there. There's some hot bitchy men with that haircut, yeah, too. Yeah, I was, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't and then, yeah, all the fame, you know, the... the the uh, you know we're gonna go we're gonna drink gin out of little glasses and wear tuxedos. <laughs> we're classy. We're all high class. Yeah. High class. Yes, we're gonna go and knock those on the door. are though. I we're agree. gonna go to an illegal. The stupidest glasses. It's the stupidest ever. Invented. Yeah, yeah no, you're, not, you're not. It's not like a brandy snifter where you're trying to smell yeah. the. Straight you get your whole hand around that gin. bad boy. I mean, no. You're not dropping yeah, that. Yeah, but well, that's a, of, but so you got to do a that's balancing a act with a martini That's a glass. snifter. Well, that's what I'm saying. The whole idea. The so, so martinis could have just went in snifters and been perfectly fine, and glasses would not be broken. Yeah, well, the champagne glass, some people use this, uh, the old-style champagne glass as a martini glass. I think that's what some of them are. Originally, yeah. there were champagne glasses. People just started putting martinis in champagne glasses, and then they started designing fucking martini glasses that were, you know, ornate. And then you have, yeah, now you got all these, these people come in to Mar- Martini Mondays with insulated glasses. Uh, oh, they're aluminum. bringing their tumblers. No, they're, yes. they're bringing their, they hey, their hold on a last they have night, that aluminum last night. martini glasses. Last night, the lady brings in her Dolphins Yeti. Oh. And she hands it to Jim. No, don't say. And, I she, didn't fill and, it up. and it made a martini. I'm not going to say her name. No, I didn't say it made a martini in there. I poured the martini. I made the martini. I poured it in a regular glass and I dumped it in there. <laughs> so no. she knew she wasn't going to ripped off. You, you well, no, 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 not no, for that reason. Favorite drinking. No, glass. no, but I can't. I can't. Oh, for, I can't just fill up reasons. a tumbler. Yeah, we're not. Can't fill up a yeah. tumbler. No, no, you, you made it like you know what happens when someone drinks too many martinis. Look right over there. <laughs> there you he's go. My neighbor. I know he's great. <laughs> Joey, see ya. Why are you leaving, buddy? <laughs> Joe. Let me be out of here, okay. Go have another yeah. martini. Yeah, have another. He doesn't drink martinis. I he only drinks Bud Light. That's Joey. Joey K. Every time the guy walks in, I mean, people sitting there, and they were asking questions about some of the marine life. And they go, as luck would have it, right over here is one of the premier uh, marine biologists. He's retired from the University of Tampa, Dr. Joey K. And he goes... <laughs> I'm not talking about that stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah. he, he doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> Whatever they come in. And someone was talking about, um, I was in Poland. They said, oh, do you have a hard time with the politics over there? Blah, 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 blah. And they go, as luck would have it, he was one of our chief diplomats to Eastern Europe during the Soviet uh, occupation of Eastern Europe. Oh, geez, yeah. And people go, really? And they go, yeah, look at him. You know, <laughs> look at the hat. Look at the guy. You look at, it. Look at the magnanimity of this man. <laughs> he just lived a life. This guy has lived a life. No, he barely, he, he knows about football, a little, a racing. He likes chicken wings well, and Bud Light. Lot. That's where he paints is. a lot. I'm and his he paints, neighbor. He, he, paints. he paints. He paints a lot. He's a good, no, he's a great guy. Yeah. He's a great guy. Every time he goes and looks at me, he goes, What'd you tell them this time? I go, yes, yes. I don't know. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. Oh, just a visual for the for the listeners here. He all, he looks like if Albert Einstein yeah, retired and, early in Key Largo and grew a little, he yeah, a little like, taller. A little he's a little taller. <laughs> he's a little taller than Albert Einstein. His hair grew a little longer, <laughs> and he wore um, the straw hats. So that's part of the vibe of the of the keys, right? The things we were talking about I right think here. So. I know. Well, I mean, oh, they got Joey and all yeah, that they're stuff. Everywhere. Martini, the martini nights and all that stuff. Drinking in the middle of the or morning, people coming hey, in, waiting around. I'm only drinking now the, because of the podcast. Incremen- Don't judge me. Uh, who ju- I'm having a Keep drink. Keep going, too. sorry, okay, I'm having a drink too. Why would I judge you? Uh, so um, th- I have this theory that even though there's a small percentage of people that actually interact with the people that come down here. So what you're faced with, especially in the Keys, it's what's going on in bars, clubs, beaches, boats, sandbar, all these places here. You don't see the houses and stuff where people are doing things with their kids and their birthday parties. Everything happens within 50 yards of US-1 until you get to Key West, and then uh, 80% of it happens within two blocks of uh, the Wall Street, right? right. Yeah. And Correct. so the nature and the character of the Keys changes according to it. Let's say in Key West, on 
I should know this better, but I think Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are cruise ship days. That's about right, midweek. Yeah, midweek, yeah. midweek. And they show up, and, and these cruise ships come in, and they'll have, like, and and, and these mainly Americans, so they're going to jump off. They're going, oh, we're in America, we're in Key West. They're all coming off the ship. And you have a town, how many people live in Key West? 20,000, 25? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's not very big. No, the whole keys are 70,000, stuff like that. That's the reason why you let 3,000. Imagine you live in New York City, right? And you let, okay, so New York City, He's eight doing and a half million people. I'm doing the math and stuff like that. We have, they have uh, over 100 times our population, okay? If they let 300,000 people let loose, in New York City, three hundred thousand people from outside the area. Yeah, just how would that influence. change your thing? So you get three thousand people coming off two cruise ships, coming into your town, and they're doing some people maybe shopping and stuff like that. But prim- primarily, though, yeah. they're in Key West. They're going to do the Key West it's thing. Drinking. They're going to drinking. They're going to the cross dressing shows, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. Like our friend Peter liked to do over there. Hey, Peter, you working tonight? Hey, it's Pedro. Yep, one of the great chefs that we have yeah. down here. Peter was on there. <laughs> Best oh. cheesecake you'll ever have. Yes. If you see yes. cheesecake on, on the board at the catch, just get it. It's, a, it's, a, it's the best cheesecake. Yeah, it's an apple apple cheesecake. Oh, you got one right now? Yeah. You have an apple one right now? I have one. Best Ooh. cheesecake I ever had, he made a butterscotch cheesecake that go into the had, Canadian roots there a little bit. He made about... It was fantastic. You know, I told the story about that when he... Yeah. Peter sounds like Count Chocula. He kind, of looks like, he kind of looks like Count Chocula. No, but he goes like this, and we're arguing, yeah. we're arguing over the Canadian change rate. <laughs> and I go like this. You were there, and I go. Oh, I think it's around three point uh, right. was three point seven five, or, or no, 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 not three point seven. Right? It was uh, the loony. It was like one point two four Canadian to uh, American. And he goes, I know the exchange rate. I'm Canadian, you know. And I go, I can tell by your accent. He goes, Why do I have to work with such stupid motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Was great. It was great. <laughs> yeah, and I go like this. I said, Peter, if I got to bottle that, man, I would give that away for Christmas. <laughs> that was beautiful, man. Oh, and he goes, um, so he started taking it. But there's the keys are changed by. Well, how did we get? There? He was walking yeah, by. by the, yeah, there. I know. By the, the, by the yeah, yeah. But you were talking about the things like what just happened this last weekend, where as a bartender, I mentioned this to you earlier. It's race weekend. I could go, it's 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 race cars, NASCAR weekend. You know, the the the, the final race, and they all end up staying down here because they can't find things in Homestead. I could go a month and not serve one Coors Light for the entire month at my bar. We ran out of Coors Light. Every year, that's how you can tell when it's race oh, weekend. Oh, that's funny. The people that drink Coors Light, it's such a horrible beer. I hate it. I hope they're never a sponsor of this show. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's disgusting. We never sell any down here. Ah, that that's won't just, be a big I, deal. And I think that's just kind of part of the, the you know, anywhere you go, the culture of beers change, I guess. But we don't sell any. Race weekend, we go we're through like crazy. We're down here. The, the people want to drive faster. Oh, J- Jim wants to say something. No. Time. Oh, you were really antsy. No, no, I was enjoying what you were saying. I'm sorry. Where are you yeah, but that's just one thing. So then you go to that. Then uh, you have the time of year whenever you see all the rent-a-cars, and you know it's Fucking Mustang season, convertibles it's the Mustang coming down the road. Mustang you know, Volusia County, baby. You know, that's a, that's they're, a rental they're, car. They're, they're either from Europe or somewhere. White ones, Canada, red always, ones, yellow ones. Oh, yeah. All the most yeah. disgusting colors. Or someone Not one local that I know. Or someone flipping out, or someone flipping out when they see a lizard. <laughs> And the lizard, the lizard comes up to him, and they go ah! And they said, "Oh my God, you must have just gotten off a plane." <laughs> yeah, because those lizards, I'm telling you, yeah, they know they're all go. over the place. They're gonna be falling out of trees. If it gets cold at night, yeah. I, you ever tell me I was with the, the 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 Hilton when it was the Grand, and I was dating this girl, and we're hanging out on the beach, and all of a sudden, uh, I was I was waiting for her, and all of a sudden. I'm, a freaking iguana falls right out of a palm tree. <laughs> and I'm going, and I just got down here, and I go, why is it iguana? Is there iguana disease? No, it's under it's under 75, and they get lethargic. Yeah, yeah, they get and it was cold. Getting windy yeah, and like, and here I am here. from the north, and I'm like, well, this is great. I'm burning up. I'm getting a little sweat going on. And they got iguanas falling out of a tree because it's a little too cool it's and breezy. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. But um, so your race week. Oh, I just covered race week. You get you get the you know the summertime tourists down here. Summertime. 
uh, you get the, the the snowbirds are going to be coming here real soon. Well, they are here. They are and here. You know them because oh, yeah. they tie the sweat their sweater arms around their necks, that's, or they <laughs> pop their collars. Like the young ones, their 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 collar will be just straight up. And it's like that's not what a collar's for. I don't. No, you know what I know we do it because they're not very clean, <laughs> exactly. so they don't want to get their uh, they want to get an even. A uh, neck stain across there. Gotcha. That's what I say to people when they go like, oh, I know what that's for. Because your hair's dirty and stuff. You get all that grease and all that stuff out of it, off your hair and stuff, onto it. So the, the whole collar's the same dirty color. And they look at, what? Yeah. Or you could just wear it down like the way they designed it. Oh, yeah, the way it's, yeah. Yeah. The way it's designed, <laughs> which is aerodynamic. And they go, what? I say, yeah, it was built for flight, man. You ever see the flying nun? And they look at me, and I'll just say all this shit. <laughs> Zero dynamic, like I'm saying something really sorry. Yeah, like the fucking uh, <laughs> flying nun. And then that just blows my whole fucking argument. And then they go away, totally per- perplexed. The, 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 the popped collar, though, that's a rich man, poor th- man thing. You know, rich man, poor man, you know. Yeah, lots like, of cars in the driveway. That's a rich yeah, man, poor man. kind of a frat boy Pop kind of collar thing. is kind yeah. of rich. Well, no, because there, you, get, you get a lot of uh, uh, gangster rappers. There's, there's, there's even a song. Yeah, like if you have I can't remember. You know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's funny. You know what I mean? Really? Talking about yeah, it. yeah. So it's a big, it was a big thing in, in inner cities, and then it's a big thing with the. You room. know how everything's a spectrum? Now, I mean, let's say a circular, a circular spectrum, right? You have that. Yeah. Uh, Flavor Flav had the big fucking clock around his neck and stuff like that. Well, yeah, gangster rapper or something has a big fucking clock. Well, the wealthy guy, a hundred years before then, 1880, had a big fucking pocket watch with a big gold chain hanging out of his yeah, pocket, yeah. and they'd always like whip it out. In front of the thing. So the same thing with the rappers and the businessmen in the 1880s. They had the same shit going. Yeah, but they, they go, but the rappers. And they always, go and look out and they go like, that was their thing. The, the rappers always get the really good ones right though. Like, uh, for some reason, uh, we always rebrand the wrong things. Like, remember Zoot Suit Riot? In the late oh my 90s. god! Like, yes, I do. I tried them. to bring the zoot suit back. You no, know, like, that wait, wait, was that the guy uh, Brian Setzer? <laughs> Brian Setzer, Brian Orchestra. Setzer. Yeah, Brian Setzer Orchestra. I see. He had a great no, no, career. No, no, no. Stray no. cats, stray cats, and then he brought oh, back. Uh, I'm not saying he didn't have a good. No, career. no, I'm not saying. And I'm not saying that either. He brought back. But I'm going like band. that clothing. That was a waste. Yeah, the mighty mighty Boston's was part of that area too. Zoot suits just had long ass suit. And thing I don't see is comfortable and stuff like that. I don't like tight suits. I don't like the form fitting suits. I don't like the suits that well, where suits it looks like are, you got high water pants and short. Well, to me, zoot suits are just hammer pants with a nice, uh, <laughs> like suit vest. No, jacket. no, a zoot suit kind is of. a big, <laughs> kind of, a big right? ass, and baggy, big, yeah. a, big, a big ass jacket with big shoulders, wide oh, shoulders, big, and, and pads, pants too. Pads, yeah, yeah, giant pants. The zoot the suit, but the bottom of the collar the goes down to the by by the yeah, knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that stuff. It's big, heavy one. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like the, uh, I mean, I like some of the shit they had. Like, uh, I think about like the 1800s with the capes. I'd like a cape. I wish Fucking that would cape. come back. No, but you know what? If you had a, if you were, as long as you're attacking someone, a cape's great. If you're running away, <laughs> if you're running away from someone, a cape is a bad idea. Because they get into something, grab they grab <laughs> it. It's like fucking feet. long hair when you're a football player and stuff like that. You're allowed to tackle with hair, right? Well, that's why you have to have the, uh, you know, the, the Velcro around your neck. So when they grab it, it just comes yeah. off or something. Fucking, I love, I would love one of these capes and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm, well, I was a Superman fan. You were what? A Superman fan. Oh, okay. I was watching uh, a show um, about um, uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. And okay. Mr. Rogers got really pissed off at... Um, these uh, children's cartoons depictions and one of them was Superman because the kids were going out. It was sometime in the 80s. Kids were jumping off the side of a um, Superman movie. They were jumping off the side of their houses and shit like Did that. Did people get just as mad with people with umbrellas and Mary Poppins? Mary Poppins. Like, was that a thing too? <laughs> well, did Mary yeah. Poppins didn't people jump? Mad at that? No, wait a second. No, she it was did. a concern. No, wait. Yeah. That was my time. Wait yeah. a second. Yeah. Mary Poppins did not Jump into the air. She just she lifted flew, off. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Lifted off. You don't jump off. Yeah. But you can't tell me when you were a kid that that, that was a big influence because it was. Down oh, I used, to, I used to. I used to get on these big ass swings, and when we got onto them, and you go as high as you can, you know where you, you're getting up to 180 degrees. And then jump off and jump off. Yeah. And you, if you had an umbrella, even better. As a big Superman fan, do you want to know my one big beef with Superman? What? Do you know that he originally was never supposed to fly? No, just jumping. Yeah, he leapt. 
tall yeah. buildings in a single bound. Yeah. Not just flew around the world no, so they, fast that he went back in time. <laughs> so, yeah, that bothers no, me. No, and it's funny. Right. How do you make yourself fly <laughs> faster? You know, like squeezing your hands and making a face. <laughs> I'm going faster. I'm like, oh, well. Yeah, that, 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 the flight, the, the flight. <laughs> the, I mean, a logical child is say, well, what's powering you in this flight? What is your propulsion system? I don't think they put that much thought into it, but no. they probably come Try up with an explanation. Case, there's a little girl from Belgium that's graduating uh, with a doctorate from uh, college in... What, in Superman flight? No, in, she's <laughs> that little girl devel- uh, graduating this year in Belgium from university. Oh, yeah, 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 she's gradu- yeah, yeah, she's graduating yeah, yeah. with a doctorate. And I, I, I swear to God, she and under- It's a little boy, she probably has understood. long hair. She pretty, she pretty much understood... It's a little boy. You probably when she was four... It's a boy? It's a little boy, but Not the a picture girl? has long hair, and people are mistaking it for a girl. Oh, I'm sorry to say boy. that. Okay. Well, yeah. either way. Just let me know. Okay. How old is little, by the way? Nine. Eight, ten? Nine. 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 So I guarantee you, when four years old, this kid knew. So, she's a prodigy. What's the system? Yeah. No, but I mean. How old was Mozart when he composed his first uh, symphony? Seven, right? Seven. And, and he was wearing makeup and a wig at seven. <laughs> because it was accepted. It was accepted. Yeah, I know, it was everyone still did. at seven. It's a, it's a seven year. Yeah, there's That's nothing right. wrong with that. Hey, hey, mom, where's my other wig? I don't like this wig. <laughs> and, and, and 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 quit buying me this shit makeup. <laughs> Buy me that wig that makes me look like the. Not the Walmart makeup. <laughs> Come on. No, but it, if everyone's wearing that, how do you really stand out? You don't. With the white powdered face and it's the, like the and zoot a, and suit. Wig. If everyone's how do they wearing get them a all zoot to have suit? receding hairlines, no matter what age. <laughs> No, no, all those gonna, wigs have receding hair. Yeah. Yeah, the wig's never down here at a hairline. It's always back no, here. The like, powdered wig was the mark of royalty. <laughs> um, the working class didn't wear powdered yeah, wigs. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They, they just didn't. If you were in the upper elites, yeah. you wore a powdered wig. Oh, so you could argue back then playing the piano was an elitist. Well, that's what they call the roundheads. It was an elitist Absolutely. art. Yes. But, and so Mozart was an elitist. No, you had to be wealthy to well, have wait, a piano. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yes. 90, yeah, 90, 90, 90 percent of the people did not know how to read. Yeah, so you're, right you're going to go 90% They're of the right. people, so elitist, and 10% knew how to read. Okay, <laughs> fuck. They didn't have these. They Remember the, the famous scene from um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Of course. Which one? Which, one? which, which famous the scene? The famous scene was when King Arthur's riding by, and he goes up to the peasants, and he says, I'm king of the Britons. I'm and they go, what makes you king? He goes, well, we're in this shit over here. And the guy goes into a really... Long explanation. Oh yeah, right on the side Michael of the road, Palin. the muddy road. I remember that. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, great yeah a long explanation and stuff like that. They hardly could understand those concepts. That was the invention of religion. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Mis- life is misery. Right when I die, I'm going to heaven. That was it. Huh? That's what they understood. And we got some people right now that are still out there believing this shit. And they said, "Don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about what happens to them right now." And no, the same, same people. people think it's 5,000 years old, this earth of ours. Yep. And or you six, can't convince 6, them otherwise. 000. Nope. Some say 10 even now. Yeah. Oh, really? They're going 10? Soon, they'll be yeah, saying yeah, they're 15. Trying to, they're, they're saying hey, you know what? It's, the now, le- it's now legal in one state. I can't remember what state. They oh, just Texas. Made it, they or made some, it legal for uh, use, them use to say 10,000. The earth is only 10,000 years scientific, without being in trouble. No, a scientific explanation. If you If you fail at something for religious reasons... You, you, it, they cannot be failed for they a science. They cannot be Yeah, yeah. Craziness. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm going to. Oh, like I said, we got to make our own fun. We're this all day. What? Religion and politics. Let's ruin the podcast right now. <laughs> what, what was it? Yeah, let's, no, no, that was it. That was fucking it. That's all right. You know, it's none of that. We're, we're at the end. We're about 50 minutes. Oh. So it's the end of the world. We ruined we ru- ruined enough people's lives right now with listening to this stuff. Oh, come on, and we didn't ruin it, but we at least wasted. Well, a not ruined it. We ra- wasted some of your time, time. here. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Papa Joe and Josh. Well, oh, thank thanks you. for having uh, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna be back here again. I'd, eventually, uh, we're gonna be at the Tiki Bar and stuff like that. Uh, well, over ten there. feet away from us. Yeah. Well, ten. Are we gonna stand I'm up and look at the crowd? I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say about as podcasters. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't and uh, hand out free booze. I don't oh, advertise. Well, I don't advertise this episode yet. Well, when we have this set up, I'm gonna have that um, the bar. We probably have uh, figure out how to rig a camera because we're gonna do a live feed with that. Oh, we're gonna do the whole thing from here. Oh, and I think this would be the best time. The lighting. I wanted to do it right now so we can look at the lighting. Folks, if you could see it, we'll post some pictures of it. 
Um, the bar is called gaffers. I don't know what that, that is. Is that is that gaffing like this? Is that a hateful word? Towards a gaffer? Well, gaffer in in, in like people from Tolkien, Georgia. In Tolkien thing is an old old person. A gaffer in fishing is someone who uses a gaff to grab a fish. Oh, it's like hooker. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Like hooker. Let's call it hookers. Yeah, it's like a hooker. Like when they opened that bar over here, there was a horrible idea called D, D, D hookers. hookers. Right. And then they had all the girls dressed like prostitutes. <laughs> Did they? Well, they. Oh, yeah, yeah like kind of. I'm sorry. They, they, I, Short I shorts. A overboard for comedic value, but they dress like girls from. Like, I didn't hooters, go in there. Spandex, really, really, really tight shorts yeah. and everything. Well, I and then they're called club D either. hookers, which everybody knows what a D hooker is. But it's what a, is a D hooker? A D hooker know. is what you put in the mouth of a fish real quick that takes the hook out. It's a oh, D-hooker. a D hooker. Right, that was the name of the bar. But hooker was really big. Hooker is when your significant really other comes up in and, there and there's a bunch and, of and, and puts a kibosh on your proposal. Hookers. <laughs> yeah, and it was supposed to be or a family sports bar. Dirty hooker. A bunch of dirty hookers. Yeah, it lasted a year. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, there was one year. That it's now Alfredo's Cookhouse, which is a delicious think, place. Yeah. It has the best michelada on the island. Well, we don't free advertising. Catch, sorry. catch. No, no, no. Nope. No more. Them. They got no, more. Next no more. No more. No more. No more. We'll do. We'll go over there if they want. But uh, we're right here. okay. Well, well catch, you know what? If you come catch, to Key Largo, you know you have more the, than one the, place. The to catch, eat. Here's the thing: the catch once a week. My girlfriend makes me come here on Wednesday nights for the uh, sangria that they make here. So, Why Wednesday night? I don't know. Well, because it's our night off together. Oh, yeah. We have that night off together, so we come here Wednesday nights but, for sangria. Hey, listen. I tried the uh, key lime chicken last night. Since we're talking about yeah. the catch, and once again. What an outstanding dish. Oh, yeah. And I'm picky with food like you wouldn't believe, but... Uh, I promise you we're going to get that I, money to you. I had that a great chicken is, sandwich for lunch today, and it was fantastic. Amazing. I mean, I can't speak... I even told Damon. I said, this challenges another restaurant who's well-known for yeah. these plates. No, no, no. There's no need to go there anymore. Oh, I mean, yeah. this is... He really outdid himself. And that is a fantastic. That was dish. Chef uh, Felipe. Felipe. Oh, Felipe is wonderful. Felipe is wonderful, and we got Ralphie, we got Luisa, and uh, Chef Peter does uh, some amazing desserts. Um, we have the owners, Kathy. And they no Paige. longer have the dishwasher that was throwing the pots and pans over the wall into the neighbor's yard. Oh, can I not mention that here? Well, that's all right. That's, that's kind of a funny story. story. <laughs> I don't want to. This is Keith's okay, bartender. Okay, you know, okay, you got a lot of bartenders. Okay, listening. okay. This is the greatest story ever. Okay, the, the okay. I will, you know what? I think it's going to. I think it's going to negate my request and say, you know, maybe we can get a like. You know, it's funny. Maybe we can get a. a <laughs> we did interview that bar kid. Tab. It was cold over. Okay, yeah. Some kid decided <laughs> instead of doing dishes, you want to go to the back retaining wall and throw the dishes over. <laughs> and someone looked over there and saw a bunch of pans and dishes. And, <laughs> the neighbors and so found it. Yeah, the na- no, the neighbors didn't find it today. I was told. I was told. Yeah. That the guy came over here and said, "There's a bunch of pots and pans in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing here?" Oops. That's just the funniest thing. Best late. He was expediting yeah. as well. Uh, you know, if he, uh, you know, it would have been great if the kid made up an elaborate excuse and saying, "Listen, Listen, what I was doing is I learned that sunlight was the best disinfectant, <laughs> and I took a bus pan of the dishes." And I put it on the wall to get it closer to the sun. And the wind came. And the wind came and pushed the bus pan over there. And then I tried it again. <laughs> That's the reason there's 10 bus pans worth of uh, pots and, and dishes behind there. Oh, sorry to bring that up, but I, that, that's one of my favorite. No, stories. that is <laughs> classic. That's a great story. That's a great story. Yeah. Why wouldn't you bring that up? Uh, but once again, we are at 102, uh, mile marker 102 in Key Largo on Route 1 on Overseas Highway on the ocean side. Come by and see us here. Uh, we're going to be uh, coming to you in the next couple of weeks. I keep on saying this, but we're going to do it. We just came out reaching. There's a wife on the phone right now, so I think I'm going to sign off right now. Say goodbye, Josh. Goodbye, pos- podcast landia. And Papa Joe. Goodbye, I'll see Papa you a little Joe. later. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you later tonight. Yeah. Oh, and here he goes. See, I got to talk to the wife. <laughs>